Back here on the Bull Ring this afternoon, presented by 5150. You know, here on Racing America, we love showcasing young talent. We've had Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney, Harrison Burton, just a few of the drivers that we've watched grow and end up in the NASCAR Cup Series. Well, our friends at Race Face Driver Development do it better than anyone else. Today, we're going to check in again with Anthony Alfredo and see who's next. Hello, everybody. This is Anthony Alfredo, and welcome to a new episode of Who's Next. Today, we head to Clovis, California to meet Jade Avedizian, who is a dirt racer for CB Industries owned by Chad Boat. She's only 15 years old, driving the number 14 car. Jade, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on. It's great to have you. We appreciate your time. How old were you actually when you first started racing? And tell us a little bit about that start. Yes. Yeah, so... I was seven years old and I started in quarter midgets and then did the quarter midgets and then junior sprints, micros, and now midgets. Can you tell us about what it looked like for you as a driver to win three championships in just one year, especially when you first started racing? What did that all entail? Yeah, that was, that was a very cool uh, year for sure. So my dad always thought it was very important for us to like, even when I was that young, travel and uh, see new tracks, meet new people, race against different people. And we're still doing that, obviously. But yeah, that year was really cool. We got the first one and then the second one and then ended up winning the th uh, last one, which was the third one. Well, that's definitely exciting. How many races did you actually run that year? Uh, about 60 races that year. That's unbelievable. So that's a yeah. lot of races, right? Double to what we're used to on the on the National Circuit NASCAR side of things. I know a lot of dirt racers who run so much, uh, but I'm, I'm shifting to a different gear here. What exactly has it been like being a female in a, in a sport mostly dominated by males? Has that been a challenge in, in ways on and off the track or just when you compete? Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, no, I wouldn't say the female part. I feel like everyone goes out there and they have the same goal. If anything, I would say how young people are like, like uh, last winter, I made a mistake at a really big race. And I think it was just like, oh, this kid, this kid is like 15 years old. I think it was, if anything, it's your age instead of like a female perspective. That's definitely a, a great perspective to have and, and a great approach. I can agree that when we all put the helmet on, we're there for the same reason. That's to go to go win and compete and get the best finish possible. Uh, but yeah. that being said, does it still feel special when you beat up on all the boys and men in the sport? Yeah, definitely. For sure. <laughs> That's awesome. So in 2017, you won the USAC Junior Sprint National Championship. What exactly was that year like? And give us a little bit of insight of what that meant to you. Yeah, uh, every track championship every year is just you got to be consist consistent every race. Uh, even if you don't win that race, you still have to try to be in the top five. Or if you wreck out, try to still get back out there. And just even if you have to finish in the back, just try to get as many points. So just rack up the points throughout the year and see where you end up or end up at the end of the year. Definitely. Well, in 2019, you had some major wins across the country. What made that year so special? Yeah, that year was also a really cool year. So we started off with California Speed Week, got a night off, uh, picked a night off that for the win. And then I feel like we kind of just started getting our momentum, won a few local shows, and then we went to Clay Cup, picked up that win. And then it was like, oh, it's um, Mark Gopian Memorial time. So went out there, picked up that win. And then the end of that, or the end of that year going into 20, 2020, I picked up the shootout, which was like another awesome year too. <laughs> Yeah, so not only an incredible season in 2019, but in 2020, you mentioned the Tulsa shootout, the restricted championship. That has to be a, a huge win, an amazing feeling. What exactly uh, did that mean to you, your your family, supporters, and your sponsors? Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, that week is 
very long, could be overwhelming at some point, but just because how many cars, how many people, but you just got to act like it's another race and started, I think I started fifth and then started picking them off and yeah, it was awesome though, <laughs> overall. So I'm not even a dirt racer necessarily, I didn't come from a dirt racing background. I know that every dirt racer wants to win the Tulsa shootout and there are an absolutely incredible amount of cars there. So do you remember how many were there and what it was like competing in that event at the Expo Center? Yeah, I don't exactly remember, but I would say around 1,500 or so. That is absolutely unbelievable to even think about, to narrow it down to, uh, you know, the final A main and, and be able to be a winner. And that is a huge accomplishment. Uh, you also con contended and won the Lucas Oil Now uh, 600 national championship in the restricted a class. Uh, so that was a big accomplishment. Tell us about that. And then now kind of shift gears to what's ahead in 2022. Yeah. So, uh, 2020 it's kind of when started COVID hitting. So all the California tracks got shut down and we were, uh, we were already back there and we were like, and we were at the airport, we were actually flying home. And my mom was like, well, they're shutting down everything. So we made like a last minute decision before we went on the flight. Let's just leave everything there for the rest of the year and just race what they have. So we got, we did the now 600 thing and those, those races in that year was awesome too. A lot of races, a lot of traveling, but I'm glad we ended up staying there instead of coming home and just sitting around basically, cause it was all closed, but yeah, that year was cool. And then um, this year, 2022, uh, focusing on the midget uh, basically the whole year. Um, just our goal, I'm with CB Industries again this year, and our goal is to just try to pick off a few wins this year. That's awesome. Well, it's definitely great, especially during that 2020 year to stay busy and be able to race a lot and now focus on 2022 here a couple of years later. But that being said, a lot of dirt racing talk, a lot of wins, a lot of accomplishments, but do you see a pavement transition in the near future with the stock car industry? Yeah, that's where I really want to end up. So if I get the opportunity, awesome. I'm definitely going to take it. Well, thank you again, Jade, for coming on the show. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in for another episode of Who's Next. I'm Anthony Alfredo, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, Anthony. And, of course, uh, we're going to keep our eye on Jade throughout this 2022 season. I think we're going to hear quite a bit from her. <laughs>